an engine so powerful it could replace two locomotives. The EMD-265H wasn't modest, wasn't proven, and wasn't designed to work quietly in the background. It was built for something far more ambitious, to dominate American railroading with raw, unprecedented power that would rewrite the rules of what a single locomotive could do. From 1996 until barely 2008, this audacious American 16-cylinder four-stroke was supposed to become the future of freight haulage, producing 6,300 horsepower from a single prime mover, the most powerful diesel engine EMD had ever created. It promised to let one locomotive do the work of two SD-42s, the legendary workhorses that ruled American rails. With 1,010 cubic inches per cylinder and twin turbochargers, it proved that ambition isn't enough. You need reliability, testing, and the patience to get revolutionary technology right. But here's what makes the 265H truly fascinating. It was EMD's first four-stroke locomotive engine since the 1930s, abandoning six decades of two-stroke dominance to chase cleaner emissions and higher power. Yet within a decade, nearly every single one was ripped out, scrapped, or shipped overseas. So how did the most powerful engine in EMD's history become one of its greatest failures? Historical Context and Development the mid-1990s were a different time in railroading. EMD and GE were locked in a horsepower arms race that would have made Cold War generals proud. GE was gaining market share with increasingly powerful locomotives, and EMD needed an answer. The goal was audacious. Build a 6,000-horsepower locomotive that could replace two of the industry-standard 3,000-horsepower SD-42s, one unit doing the work of two. The economics were irresistible. In 1994, EMD announced they were developing something radical, a four-stroke diesel engine. This was a massive departure. EMD had built its reputation on two-stroke designs since the legendary 567 debuted in 1938. But emissions regulations were tightening and AC traction motors had changed the game. These new motors could actually use 6,000 horsepower without just spinning the wheels uselessly. The power could finally be converted to pulling force. EMD had actually experimented with four strokes before. Back in 1984, they built two prototype 16-cylinder 854H engines producing 4,500 horsepower. But the math didn't work. To hit 6,000 horses, they needed something bigger much bigger. So they started fresh with the 265H, named for its 265 millimeter bore. This time they pulled out all the stops. 3D modeling, finite element analysis, computational fluid dynamics, tools that didn't exist when their last four-stroke rolled out of the factory. The development team at EMD's Lagrange, Illinois facility worked through the mid-1990s, and by 1996, Eight prototype engines were ready for testing at the Transportation Technology Center in Pueblo, Colorado. The future of EMD was riding on this engine. The Golden Age. Let's talk numbers, because the 265H was a monument to bigger is better thinking. Each cylinder displaced 1,010 cubic inches. For context, that's nearly the size of an entire V8 car engine per cylinder. The bore measured 10.4 inches across with a 12-inch stroke. 16 of these massive cylinders arranged in a V configuration gave a total displacement of 16,160 cubic inches. At 1,000 revolutions per minute, the 16265H produced 6,300 horsepower and 21.3 bars of brake mean effective pressure. Those are staggering numbers. The engineering was genuinely impressive. Twin turbochargers, one for each cylinder bank, force-fed air into the combustion chambers. The crankcase switched from welded steel to ductile cast iron for better strength and vibration damping. Electronic unit injection replaced the mechanical systems of old, offering precise fuel control. The connecting rods went from EMD's traditional fork and blade design to a side-by-side -side arrangement, 
Every major component was either new or significantly redesigned. The 265H made its public debut in the EMDSD-90MACH locomotive, unveiled between 1995 and 1996. Union Pacific and Canadian Pacific both placed orders, excited by the promise of unprecedented power. EMD even built convertible SD-9043 Massey locomotives, units fitted with the proven 4,300 horsepower 710 engine, but designed to accept the 265H later, once any initial bugs were worked out. It was a clever hedge, and it would prove prophetic. By 1998, Union Pacific began running H-powered SD, 90 MACS in commercial service. These were the most powerful single-engine diesels in North America. Tidewater Marine saw potential too, ordering 2016-cylinder 265H engines for tugboat applications in 2002. For a brief, shining moment, it looked like EMD had pulled off the impossible. The H engine was real, it was powerful, and it was in service. Technical brilliance. What made the 265H truly special was its four-stroke architecture. In a two-stroke engine like EMD's legendary 710, every revolution of the crankshaft produces a power stroke. In a four-stroke, it takes two revolutions, intake, compression, power, exhaust. On paper, this seems less efficient, but four-strokes have advantages better fuel economy at partial load, lower emissions potential, and more complete combustion. For an industry facing increasingly strict EPA regulations, this mattered. The engine's massive 1,010 cubic inch per cylinder displacement allowed EMD to generate enormous power without resorting to extreme RPMs or cylinder counts. The 16-cylinder version produced 6,300 horsepower at just 1,000 ERPM, a relatively modest speed that should have promoted longevity. There was also a 12-cylinder variant designed for the SD89MAC demonstrator, producing 4,500 horsepower, though it never entered production beyond one prototype unit, EMDX-92. The power assemblies were engineering marvels in themselves. EMD maintained their unitized design philosophy. Each cylinder was a complete module that could be pulled and replaced, but everything was scaled up. The side-by-side -side connecting rods eliminated the complexity of fork and blade designs while handling the tremendous forces generated by cylinders this large. The electronic fuel injection system gave precise control over injection timing and duration, critical for managing emissions and efficiency in an engine of this size. But here's what made the 265H genuinely advanced for its time. The integration. This wasn't just a big engine. It was a systems-engineered approach to locomotive power. The twin turbochargers, the sophisticated cooling system, the electronic controls, they all had to work together perfectly. And that's where theory met reality. Challenges rise. The problems started almost immediately, and they were serious. Crankshaft bearings began failing in service, traced back to lube oil contamination. The massive forces involved in each power stroke were unforgiving of even minor issues. Cylinder components showed excessive wear, but the most critical problem was overheating. Despite all the engineering analysis, despite the promises of an advanced cooling system, the 265H ran hot, too hot. The engine would overheat and shut down, leaving thousands of tons of freight stranded on the main line. For a railroad, there's no worse sin than unreliability. Maintenance crews dreaded working on the H-powered units. The teething problems that EMD expected to resolve quickly proved stubbornly persistent. Then came the cruel irony, emissions. One of the primary reasons EMD developed a four-stroke was to meet tightening EPA standards. But the 265H actually produced higher emissions than the older two-stroke 710. 
The fuel consumption was excessive too, eating into any economic advantage the high horsepower provided. By the time EPA Tier 2 regulations hit in 2003 to 2004, the 265H was already obsolete. Canadian Pacific's experience was even more telling. They originally ordered 20 SD 90MACH locomotives. After seeing the reliability issues, they cut the order to just four units. Four. EMD had built an engine nobody wanted. The convertible SD 9043MAC fleet, over 300 locomotives built to accept the 265H, was never converted. Not a single one. Railroads looked at the reliability of their 710 powered units and decided to leave well enough alone. The transition. By the early 2000s, the writing was on the wall. EMD had built fewer than 70 true SD90MA CH locomotives between 1996 and 2000. Production quietly ended as the company shifted focus back to proven technology. Union Pacific, which had been the most enthusiastic customer, began storing H-powered units by 2005. Many were barely five years old. On August 1st, 2008, Union Pacific made it official. They would retire 21 SD 90MACH locomotives. The frames would be scrapped, the prime movers cut up or exported. Only the components that could maintain the 710 powered SD 9043MAC fleet would be salvaged. It was a quiet death sentence for EMD's most ambitious engine program. Canadian Pacific's four SD90 Mac H locomotives, numbers 9,300 through 9,303, went up for tender sale in March 2010. Initially, there was speculation they might find new life overseas. Instead, they were moved to Quebec for scrapping. The market had spoken. Even at scrap prices, nobody wanted these engines. From first revenue service in 1998 to the retirement announcement in 2008, just 10 years, for an engine designed to dominate the 21st century, the 265H barely saw the new millennium. The locomotives limped along or were repowered. The H engine era was over before it really began. EMD's SD70ACE, powered by the tried and true 710 engine, became the company's standard bearer instead. Legacy and Modern Reality Here's the twist. The 265H wasn't a complete failure. It just failed in America. In September 2005, China's Ministry of Railways ordered 300 engines for the HXN3 Harmony-class locomotives, designated JT56ACE by EMD. These units were built under license at Dalian Locomotive Works, starting in 2009. The Chinese railways successfully deployed them, including on the demanding Qinghai-Tibet Railway, where they operated at extreme altitudes and temperatures down to minus 40 degrees Celsius. The engines also went to India, Australian mining operations, and 20 found homes in Tidewater Marine tugboats. Why did the 265H work abroad but fail at home? Several reasons. First, the export versions were later production with refinements learned from early failures. Second, operating conditions and maintenance practices differed. Third, and perhaps most important, these customers didn't have the option of proven EMD two-stroke engines. They were buying new technology, not choosing between new and proven. Today, only two 265H powered locomotives survive in their original form EMD X90 and EMD X91, test bed units used for emissions and load testing. They're engineering mules, not revenue locomotives, a fitting end for an experimental design. No museums preserved H powered SD 90M ACS. No collector carefully maintains one, they're simply gone. But the 265H did have descendants. In 2015, EMD unveiled the SD70 ACET4, powered by the 1010J engine, a heavily redesigned evolution of the 265H. 
The 12-cylinder 1010J produces 4,600 horsepower and meets EPA Tier 4 emission standards without requiring selective catalytic reduction. It features triple turbochargers, exhaust gas recirculation, and completely redesigned power assemblies. It's what the 265H should have been, thoroughly developed, properly tested, and appropriately sized. The final irony? EMD spent decades perfecting two-stroke diesels, building an empire on engines like the 567, 645, and 710. The four-stroke design they abandoned in the 1930s turned out to be necessary for 21st century emissions compliance. Sometimes progress means going backward before you can move forward. Could the 265H have succeeded with more development time and less pressure to compete? We'll never know. But as modern engines push toward ever stricter emission standards, it's worth asking, what current technology are we rushing into service that future engineers will shake their heads about? Hit subscribe because the graveyard of failed engines is far from empty.